Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn number 543. <coughs> communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie 
Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I invite our children to come forward for the children's liturgy of the word. Would you like to carry the book today? Okay. Good morning, children. Today you are going to hear, Jesus is going to tell us that we need to be ready. We need to be prepared, okay? So what do, we, what do you think we have to be prepared for? What do you think? School? school? Okay. <laughs> Maybe school. Sure. We also need to be prepared for Jesus is coming. Okay? All right. So go and listen to the Word of God. Go in peace. Go and listen to the Word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers that, with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they had put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice 
and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for, an evidence of things unseen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky, and as countless 
is the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, Blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. 
Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, lately we've been hearing a lot about different terrorist attacks that have been taking place not just in war-torn countries, but also in the U.S. and especially in Europe. And as they're designed to do, these attacks have succeeded in increasing in the general public a sense of fear and paranoia and insecurity. And I can personally attest to the psychological effect that terrorism has on the human mind. About 20 years ago, I was studying in Paris during a time when Algerian terrorists were setting off bombs in random places, in trash cans, on busy streets, on the metro, wherever. You never knew where and when the next one was going to take place. And so slowly, I started to change my behavior. After the bombing on the metro, which uh, took the lives of eight, of eight people, I stopped taking the metro and started walking everywhere. I would spend hours every day walking places just to get around. And I stopped walking down busy streets. But no matter what I did, there was this constant sense of paranoia that I couldn't get rid of. And now, as horrible as these terrorist attacks are, a little perspective is also necessary. More people actually died in terrorist attacks in Europe in the 70s and 80s than now. But in our media-saturated culture, they get more attention than ever before. And also the odds of anyone becoming a victim of a terrorist attack are still extremely minute. The odds of dying by falling off your roof are actually much greater than being a victim of a terrorist attack. But the human mind does not always work in a rational way. It's the same principle in effect that makes people cancel their flights after a big plane crash. Even though the odds of dying in a plane crash are extremely remote, much less than being in a car accident, for example. What these big newsworthy tragedies do, though, is create in us a false sense of vigilance born out of fear. We spend a lot of mental energy on these kinds of things, even though the odds of them ever happening to us are extremely slim. And yes, it's good to be vigilant, and it's good to act with prudence, but we are called to a different kind of vigilance. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus talks about the kind of vigilance that we're called to. And the kind that he talks about does not involve living in fear. In fact, the Gospel begins with Jesus saying, Do not be afraid any longer, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. But he tells us that we must also gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Being vigilant means being prepared for the coming of the Lord. And we all know that one day the Lord will come to us individually. But it's possible to pretend that this day will never come, and the younger you are, the easier it is to do. And it's also possible to live as though this day will never come, through constant entertainment, through addictions, being a workaholic, and so on. But it has come for each of the billions of people who have lived before us. And just as surely it will come for each one of us. 
Whether this day be near or far off, we don't know. How it will happen, we do not know. And nor are we supposed to know these things. What matters is that we know that it will come, and are we ready? Blessed are those servants who await their master's coming, Jesus tells us. So how do we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord, for that day when the Lord taps us on the, on the shoulder and says, it's time to go? There are a couple of points from the gospel that I'd like to make about this. First of all, Jesus instructs us not to build up our treasure here on earth, but rather in heaven. He exhorts us to give alms, to share what we have, what we've been given, with those who are less fortunate than us. And in doing so, we're building up a treasure in heaven, a treasure that will last forever. All the material things that we can acquire in this world are ultimately perishable. They're all going to be stripped away from us sooner or later. So why focus all of our energy on them when we should be focusing on what is imperishable, growing in relationship with the Lord? And secondly, the more that we've been entrusted with, the more will be expected of us. And this is especially applicable to anyone who's been entrusted with any kind of leadership role. But regardless, each one of us has been entrusted with something. What has been entrusted to you? What have you been given? And remember that everything that we have is a gift. Whatever we have, talents, material possessions, whatever it might be, it is all a gift. Even our faith is a gift. The fact that we're here today is a gift. So how do we use the gifts that we have been given? Do we actively seek to grow in our faith? Do we cultivate our relationship with Christ? Do we spend time every day in prayer? Or do we just take these things for granted? And how do we fulfill the responsibilities that we've been given? How do we live out our vocation in life? as husbands and wives, as parents, as caregivers, as children. The more that has been entrusted to us, the more will be expected of us. We're expected to be good stewards of what has been given to us. And in doing so, we are preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. This is true vigilance. It doesn't mean living in fear, nor does it mean living in a fantasy world. It means living in reality, aware that this life is not all there is. It means accepting everything as a gift from God and not taking anything for granted. Each day is a gift from God. Each Mass we attend, however mundane it may seem, is a gift from God. And when we prepare ourselves to welcome the Lord, when He comes, when we live as we ought to live, we can await the Lord not in fear, but in joyful expectation. Let us live lives of gratitude, always giving thanks to God for what we have been given. And let us live lives of generosity, sharing what we have received with others. And let us always be mindful that the Lord is coming and is even now in our midst, preparing ourselves to receive him with open arms. Now I would like to invite our, our catechumens and candidates to come forward for the breaking open of the word. <clears throat> Dear friends, you've been entrusted with the opportunity to know the Lord through your journey of initiation. Much is required of you as you continue to pattern your life on His. Know that we support you in prayer during your journey. As you go forth to reflect on the Word of God we have shared today, know that we eagerly await that day that you will remain here to share in Christ's body and blood. And now go in peace.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious power, and suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. I've spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And I look forward to the Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, aware of our needs and the needs of those around us, let us offer our prayers to the Father. <clears throat> for the whole church, that we may live with deep faith and awareness, even in the face of contrary evidence, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have grown weary of believing or have lost faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For faith in the God of peace and for awareness of opportunities for peacemaking, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For faith in the God of justice and for the courage to work for a just world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For faith in the God of healing and for the commitment to serve the sick and discouraged, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For faith in the God of truth and for the gift to discernment in a culture of exaggerations and half-truths, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are suffering in our community and for renewed efforts to meet their needs, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, the dying, and the grieving, for those who have died, especially Florentino Ruiz, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call us to prepare for your coming. Hear our prayers today and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. And please be seated for a couple short announcements. Families with children in grades kindergarten through 12 are encouraged to register their children for our fall faith formation programs. Registration materials are available in the gathering space in the kiosk. We are also seeking adult and youth volunteers to help us share the good news of Jesus through these programs. Visit our parish website or visit the parish office or pick up a bulletin for more information.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Marisa Mandujan Ortiz, and as a pilgrim, along with two million other pilgrims for World Youth Day in Krakow, Poland, <coughs> sorry, the only thing I can say is that it was a magical, once in a lifetime experience that I will never forget. This pilgrimage was physically exhausting, and it required a lot of walking and cramming into buses packed with pilgrims. <coughs> the beautiful part is that. All of those youth were gathered for one sole purpose, Christ. This spiritual journey has ignited a fire in my heart, and with this fire, Pope Francis has invited me and all the young people from all over the world to be brave. In his words, don't be afraid. God is great, God is good, and all of us have something good. Pope Francis' words speak deep within my being. I know that as a young person, it is hard to fight the current of society. But as a young person, but as young people, we need to stand up for our faith in a world where faith is pushed aside. One thing is certain, I have not come back the same way I have left. It is thanks to your prayers and support that 20 pilgrims from St. Francis de Sales were able to be part of this pilgrimage. Not only have I become closer to the pilgrims from St. Francis de Sales, but I was also able to engage in conversations with pilgrims from around the world. Your, your petitions and ours were in unison as we brought them with us throughout this mystical journey. I'll leave you with this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Thank you, everyone, for all your support. Hello, my name is Adilene Juarez, and I was also one of the 20 pilgrims that took, took part in the World Youth Day this past week. Uh, from July 21st to August 2nd, we got to travel to Rome, Italy, and Krakow, Poland. We got to meet new people, new places, and discover new dreams. I also got to experience God's love and mercy in a whole new way. I felt God's presence in the people dancing around me in the way people sang and praised our Lord. Even when Pope Francis was speaking, I felt God's presence. And even with just a simple smile from, from um, one of the other two million pilgrims that I saw, um, I felt his love. I knew he was there with us. And World, World Youth Day has been a life-changing experience for me. And I know it changed the lives of, of the other two million youth that also, took, that also attended. It is such a blessing sharing this with people of different ages, different cultures, different ethnicities, and, but we were sharing all one belief, one God, one love and merciful God. If you or anyone you know ever has the chance to attend any of the World Youth Day, you should go for it. God is calling you and it will change your life for the better. I would also like to take the time to thank every single one of you who was with us in spirit. Thank you for keeping our group and the other thousands and thousands of other pilgrims in your prayers. Thank you for all your support, and you know that you were also in all of our prayers. Thank you, and God bless you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Walk in peace, walk in beauty. 
Look at 